Good morning. Today is Friday, October 21st, 2022. My name is Lucy Altman. I'll be the moderator for this class. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. This school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many, but we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. 
Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinctions of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, age, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning, we will begin with a prayer by Dr. Deborah Hanna. We will have a song by Dr. Jackie McCain. And our scripture lesson is Isaiah, the 62nd chapter will be read by Dr. Carlton Gordon. Good morning, Good morning, brethren. May we all bow our heart or mind in a moment of prayer. Dear Father Yahweh, thank you ever so much for allowing us once again to gather in your name. Thank you for allowing us to know that Yahshua is the Savior. Please allow us to learn and know something we didn't know before and hold on to those things that we've learned and know is true. Thank you, Yashua, for teaching and showing us what eternal life truly is. Thank you for bringing us out of that darkness 
just thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise Yahshua. This and all blessings we ask in your son's name, our savior, Yahshua the Messiah. May we all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me okay? Good morning, brethren. Uh, Yahweh gave yes, me this morning. Song back in 92. Can you hear me? Okay. Again. Okay. Yahweh gave me this song back in 92, the lyrics, and uh, Dr. Mike Watts did the music, and I hope Yahweh will allow me to present it to you today. It's called Give It All to Yahshua. Yahshua gives us strength when we knew him not. When you come to know him, he's really all you got in him's eternal life. I, through the shedding, the shedding of his blood, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. If you seek him now in this kingdom, you will be in him and he in you. So look to Yahshua, for he'll give you strength. He'll show you what to do. Through the shedding, the shedding of his blood, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Mm. Give it all to Yahshua. Just give it all to him. He will carry the load. Oh, yes, he will. Give it all to Yahshua, and it will be all right. It will be all right when you come to know the truth, the hope and faith it'll bring, yes. To know him is to love him and singing praises to his name. The Father who is Yahweh, the Son is Elohim. Yahshua is the Holy Spirit and eternal life's in him. You got to give it all, give it all to Yahshua. Just give it all to him. He will carry the load. Oh, Give it all to Yahshua, and it will be all right. It will be all right for when you come to know the truth, the hope and faith it'll bring, yeah. To know him is to love him and singing praises to his name. The Father who is Yahweh, the Son is Elohim. Yahshua is the Holy Spirit and eternal life in him. You got to give it all, give it all to Yahshua and it will be all right. Hallelujah. 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 Beautiful. Hallelujah. Scripture reading. Yes, please. 
Okay, that's Isaiah 62 from the Holy Name Version, reading from the screen. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of Yahweh shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of Yahweh and a royal diadem in the hand of thy Elohim. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called my delight and thy land espoused. For Yahweh delighteth, delighteth in thee and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy Elohim rejoice over thee. <clears throat> I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. You that are Yahweh's remem remembrancers, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establishes, till he establish, and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Yahweh has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn to be food for thine enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it, and praise Yahweh. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare you the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Behold, Yahweh hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say you to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy Savior cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh. And thou shalt be called, um, if you would raise that. Um, Thought. Thought. It says, and wait a moment. It sought says, out. the what, redeemed what? of Yahweh, and thou shalt be called, sought out a city not forsaken. Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing it. Is that the end of it, though? Yeah, that's the end. Right. I'm, I'm not. Okay, I'm not seeing seeing the bottom. But, um, hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much to all of our participants. Uh, our readers for this uh, morning session are Dr. Jackie McCain and Dr. Daria Warren. And I will now turn this back over to Dr. Lenore Allen. Thank you everybody for assembling today. I appreciate you getting up and sharing your presence with us. We have a, a member with us, Dr. Kilby, who's going to share her um, personal experience. Um, good morning, Dr. Kilby. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Good morning. Yes, you sound great. Thank you. Um, I had to chuckle because when I joined, I usually call on my phone and listen in because I have grandchildren certain days. And so I was on Zoom this morning, but thanks be to Brother Frank Lewis, I, I, I had told the person that asked me to give my testimony, Sandy Wilkerson that I had all the information to join the class. Well, I forgot I had a new phone and all my contacts didn't transfer. So when I looked in there, I thought, oh no, I don't have it. So I called Sandy and she said, well, I don't have it either. And she gave me a lot of reasons. And she said, call Frank. So thanks be to uh, Yashua through Frank Lewis, I was able to get the information to join on Zoom because I wanted to be able to see um, the charts, you know, when you do virtual, you don't see the reaction of people's faces, their body language. 
or even just um, hearing, you know, maybe a sigh or, you know, something that you don't really recognize that they're doing, but subconsciously you're aware of it. So um, it's good to have the visual input. And a lot of times that is what uh, Yahweh will use to help guide you in what it is that he wants you to say. So thank you for the opportunity to give my personal testimony. Um, the scripture lesson, that chapter was about divine unrest until Israel would be restored. And um, you don't think about unrest being divine, but the word divine, one of the definitions is, is excellence or excellent. And you know, whatever Yahweh does, he does it with excellence. It's, it's the way it's supposed to be. We may not see it that way, but it is according to a divine, excellent purpose, pattern, and plan. Are there any new members on the call that you could recognize? Because I always like to do a certain preface, you know, before I start into a topic in case there are new people on the call. We have someone who's been for us for like two weeks. Okay. All right. Well, welcome again. So, and I will try to go quickly because I tend to <laughs> lollygag, I guess it is. And then when time's up, I'm trying to rush to get done. And this week, Yahweh told me, you know, um, when you rush, you mess up. So if time's up, you just be thankful and finish. And then you don't rush, to try to get something else in there. So welcome to the person that's been here a couple of weeks. So um, the moderation, when you listen to the moderation, just listen with the intent of, of learning the principles that are in there. Um, the moderation by itself is truly a lecture, a complete lecture from beginning to end. <clears throat> but there's just a section in there that I wanted to um, read over real quick and then I'll get into my testimony. So this is says Yahweh knowing that man, oh, and before I do that, let me say to the readers, thank you. And what I'll be needing is the uh, panoramic vision pamphlet and then, of course, your Bible with some scriptures. Okay, so in the um, moderation, this section says, Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. And when you're new, and even when you're older in class, time that you've spent, you know, chronological time that you've spent, <clears throat> we don't always get the... Full, we don't. We never get the full understanding, but we always don't have an understanding, um, a work. I'll say a workable understanding, and it, that's how we grow in grace. So, um, whatever Yahweh reveals to you, and you know it for a truth, and I think that was in the prayer. Uh, you know, whatever it is that you know for a truth, hang on to that. So Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son. Thank you. And so this is the word or son. This is a super incorporeal being. You know, I have to look up words all the time. So don't assume that you know what the word mean. Look, look it up. This is a super incorporeal being. And then it's kind of giving you the explanation here. That is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. This form can only be seen in divine visions, excellent visions, and understood in divine revelation, excellent revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Um, so I'm not going to go off into the names, but um, look up the J. You'll find that um, Jesus Christ could not be the name of the savior and then earlier in the uh, moderation there's a section that says the name of the holy spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is yashua and that took me years to really come to um an appreciation of you know i heard it but it took me years to really appreciate that and then once yahweh gave me the divine <coughs> revelation <laughs> a portion, a piece of that, what that meant. Then the unity of the spirit and how all things could testify to the unity of the spirit is what started to unfold for me. <clears throat> so in my life, I, what I have found is 
I didn't understand it at the time, but everything was testifying, magnifying, witnessing to the unity of the spirit. So let's go ahead and just read John, um, 1 John 5, I think it's 7 and 8, or correct the verses if I have them wrong. And then 1 I'll John 5 and 7. Thank you. But there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Thank you. So the unity of the spirit, and you can see on this um, chart, in that far right-hand side, the plate, it talks about the unity of the spirit, the father, the word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. They are, that's, that's what they are, they're, they're one. Um, I had to look up the word are, so I mean, if you wanted to look it up, but it's inclusive. That's, that's what the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, it's one. And then on earth, we have three that bear witness, and that being the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. They're not one, they're different. Uh, manifestations, but they, they agree in one. And that is how we can take that principle of the unity of the spirit, the father, the word, and the Holy spirit being one. And then we see it in the witnesses and earth, spirit, water, and blood, and those agreeing in one. And another teacher I'm sure could go through the um, pattern of the tabernacle and to show how this repeats over and over principles and always look to the new person, always look for principles because they, they will never lead you wrong. The manifestations can change, but the principles will always remain the same. Okay, so um, I wanna preface before I start the testimony part um, and part of this is because some of the work that I do, I'm a retired registered nurse and a licensed massage therapist. I still do uh, massage therapy in my retirement. But what I had to learn uh, during my training for massage therapy, when clients would come to me, they, they would come looking for me to fix things for them. And um, actually it, it was the Holy Spirit in my training. I realize now that gave me the answer. And so what I, what I was led to do is when I would feel that energy of someone having that dependency of what, you know, thinking I could fix something for them, I would just have to say, you know, it's, it's nothing that um, I can do. I can just help facilitate what it is that you would like to have done. And so that would, for me, would give me the permission to not take it on as something that was expected that I should be able to do. And likewise, we cannot um, save ourselves. We have to look to Yahshua for that. It's what we want. We want soul salvation, but we can't do that for ourselves. You, we can't work up on it. And so we do, we're blessed to have that gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm going to read to you, first of all, because I think um, I'll chop it up if I try to just tell you bits and pieces. Excuse me, did you mean to take over the, um, the screen? Oh, did somebody give me permission? Are you Galaxy Tab S5E? Oh, no, I don't need to take permission because I can't multitask. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, all right. So Lenore? Let I saw that was Yvonne's. Okay, all right. So that's that's a mistake. Okay, I have. Are you going to be reading the pamphlet about the panoramic vision? Because I have that. Uh, I'll have sections in there. Yes, I will. Uh huh. Okay. But let me uh, let me ask you this: How much time um, should I expect so I can make sure that I cover what I want to cover? I I really didn't have a limit on you. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Then um, okay. I'll begin, and okay. I, I'm going to say it's probably not going to be more than 20 minutes. All right. Okay. So this is uh, what I'm going to read to you. Read to you first of all is something that I wrote when I was in school 
Um, every 15 years, I'm back in school for some reason, physical school, but <laughs> I think I'm done with it. Um, but I wrote this for a writing class that I was taking at the time. Um, and I submitted it to, in, to National Public Radio for their This I Believe essays that they um, publish. And so that was the goal of the class was to have a published work. So um, I wrote this July 22nd of 2007. The um, experience that I had happened in 1975. So I guess I should preface the history of that. I, I was um, fairly new in class. My oldest sister married Dr. Kinley's grandson. Um, Dr. Kinley's son, R.P. Kinley, who did the charts, his, his, grand, his son, Lamont Kinley, is who my oldest sister married. So that's how we had an affiliation with Bible class. Um, I have two sisters. And so both of those sisters were, had been going to class. I was still hanging out, you know, cause I felt like I could just ride my horse in nature. And, and that was my church. <laughs> I felt connected doing that. Um, but I was invited to class and, and I heard the choir and then I saw the tabernacle, um, of tabernacle um, of man chart and being in nursing school at the time that's what drew me to class because I thought hmm, they never showed us this in nursing school so <laughs> that's that kept me coming back so the first convention that I went to was the last international convention that was held in Washington DC in 1975 and at that convention um I mean, I kind of went just to see what was happening, you know, socializing. I listened, but I really wasn't there just to get an understanding. You know, I was still kind of just hanging out. And um, when I came back home, I got sick and, and I thought I had a cold from running in and out of air conditioning and ended up in the hospital with the reaction to some medication I had been taking for a bladder infection. And so in the process of that, a reaction, it was like a chemical reaction and a burn, a chemical burn reaction. So from, and it, it was weird because it was only from the waist up that it manifested externally, internally, it also manifested. But what it was is like, if you would get um, maybe a burn from a stove and you know, you get a blister on a burn mm -hmm. and then that has fluid underneath it. And then you try not to let that top come off. You usually would cover it, you know, you don't want it to be raw but what happened in my case was um my skin turned black it blistered up had the fluid underneath and then it sloughed off and that was from the waist up all the way to my head so i'm gonna um read this real quick and then i might add some other details i wrote a, a very detailed um testimony for headquarters and i you know when thinking back now i don't think i ever got confirmation that they received it. I kept a copy, but this is a shortened version. So this is um, the theme for this NPR, this I believe essay is Afterlife. And the title that I gave it is I Believe in Life After Death. Sitting on a hospital chair, I knew my name. I could recall most of what had happened. Yet I was not the same. I was changed. I now experience sights, sounds, smells, tastes, touch and feelings through new eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin, and mind. The diagnosis was a life-threatening reaction to antibiotic medication. Mm. When admitted, I had watery pus sacs in my mouth, around my eyes, and a temperature 105.5. Within two days, the blisters covered me from head to waist. On day three, with the temperature normal, the blisters sloughed off, leaving large raw areas. By day eight, the temperature spiked to 103.8. Mm -hmm. I had pneumonia and a blood clot in my leg. Exhausted from the pain, I said, I told the doctor, it's okay, you can let me die. I'm not afraid to die. It happened instantaneously. And I apologize because I had to leave a lot of things out. This was a 500 word essay when I wrote it. It happened instantaneously. The separation of mind from body. My next memory was of depth substance, clarity, illumination without physical light and circular motion without loss of balance. Mm. I felt absolute euphoria. Imagine your greatest joy never ending. 
I wow. knew existence without the flesh. I was one with that which I was within, a part of the whole, and I knew what the whole was. I did not want to go back. Waking mm -hmm. to physical consciousness, almost two weeks had passed that I could not remember. As my body healed, my mind recalled the spiritual healing. Where had I been and come back from? Now I valued things freely given. The feel of cushiony soft pine needles, laughter of children, beauty of flowers, the smell of fresh cut grass, the ocean's ebb and tide. Day 40, I had healed enough to go home. While studying the reproductive system as I prepared for the nursing board exams, I remembered the question, where had I been and come back from? Where is life, I wondered, before the sperm fertilizes the ovum? I considered other living things, animals reproduced by conception, the process of pollination creates plants. What seemed to be the common denominator is that in order for something to live, something must die. Our existence requires it. Nature cycles, nature's cycle witnesses to life after death. In spring, the grass grows, trees and flowers bud. By summer, all are in fruition. In autumn, their glory fades. During winter, they die. Spring begins the cycle all over again. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. I believe our energy, our animated part succeeds death. Not physically so, but spiritually so. Physical things testify to spiritual things, Romans 1, 19 and 20. Invisible things are clearly seen, understood by things that are made. Where is the place I had come from? I had come from everlasting spirit. I witnessed true salvation, eternal life dwelling in the only begotten Son, 1 John 5 and 11. And this is the record that Yahweh hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. I do believe in life after death. And so that was the end of the essay, the way it was written. And of course, you know, at the time, I wanted to put a lot more in it. I had been in class for a little while. Um, by that time, 2007, um, but I had to condense it. So let's go ahead and um, go to the pamphlet. And on page one, this is the uh, panoramic vision pamphlet. On page one, if you would read, I'm gonna have you read through it and then I'll come back and kind of chop it up. If you would read at the, the last paragraph on page one through uh, it looks like the first full paragraph on page two. It, it starts with while in my meditation. Yes, correct. Okay, okay. so can the reader see it? Yes. While in my meditation, I felt myself drifting away into a- uh, Excuse me, wait, wait, wait. Can we just show the title page so people uh, know? This, you can find this on gatesclass.com. Mm -hmm. And this, can you read the name of it? Yes. Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. Some people say archetype or archetype, but I just say archetype. Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe, panoramic vision. It's archetype for, for the correct. Archetype. Okay, yes. archetype. Okay, because I know people pronounce it all type. Oh, okay, panoramic vision. Okay. Uh, oh, you, you want to read this here on the first page here? Do you know Yahweh Elohim? Do you know Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua whom he hath sent? An introduction to Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe, using the correct Hebrew name of the Heavenly Father. And if you want to see these, these are on Gates Class, G A T E S Class um, dot com. And, uh, and the pan some of the pamphlets are there. So this is the first page, um, last paragraph. While, while, while in my meditation, I felt myself drifting away into a sleep which was not sleep. I lost consciousness of my room, my bed even my body, yet I was not unconscious. The sensation of having my mind turned backward 
and inward persisted until I was no longer in possession of any earthly knowledge. I knew that I existed and that was all. I did not exist in relation to anything I could recognize. All I could recognize was me. This was that part of me which was created in the image and likeness of Elohim. It was to that me that the creator spoke. He could do nothing with the egotistical, misdirectical, misdirected personality which had involved from the many misconstrued concept as a creature of earthly flesh. The dizzy backward journey from the realm of time as I knew it into eternity of pre-creation was exhausting. Yet there was no fear. There was no need to be afraid. I had become absorbed in the universe. Wow. I was spoken to while I was in that state. I say spoken to. Yet there was no impact of sound waves upon my ears. And there were no words used. The speech did not come from somewhere else. It seemed to originate from within me. And so it did. For I was now one with the universe. It was will that I should know a certain fact, and instantly I knew it. Yahweh Elohim willed it. And as he willed so the entire universe, with me as a part of it, reacted. I knew I was being transported somewhere, yet there was no universe. No, yet there was no sensation of motion. For the moment I was universal, and motion is physical, it occupies time and takes place in space, both of which are of this earth. It was being willed that I should be a point at a point in the past where a revelation was to be made to me and I was responding to the divine will, I was there. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that is a lot. And it always fills me up every time I read it or hear it read. Um, what I want to say is what Yahweh has given you, don't, um, underestimate it, don't devalue it. The healing that I had was from the Holy Spirit and it was through our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. Revelations that we get are from the Holy Spirit. It's hard being in the flesh to not see the flesh. And excuse me because I get an emotion when I talk about it. but there's more than the flesh. And for me, what I usually do, <laughs> I've laughed out, is um, I close my eyes a lot, you know, when I hear things, when I'm listening to things, because for me, that gets rid of seeing things, you know, being distracted by seeing something fleshly. <laughs> my physical eyes are closed. And um, one day I was sitting in Bible class and had my eyes closed listening, and somebody wanted to get past me to get into the seat. <laughs> and they had to, you know, kind of tap me on the shoulder because they probably wondered why I was not letting them in. But um, don't discount the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, the, um, how do I want to say this? There are different manifestations. The principle remains the same. There are not big eyes or little used. Uh, one doesn't have more than the other. Any blessing from the Holy Spirit is truth. I'll leave it like that. 
Okay, so um, in the pamphlet, it talked about losing consciousness of the room, and that's what happened to me. It was just an instantaneous thing. I was, you know, I was, I, they had me on a circle electric bed because I was a burn victim, so they didn't want to have to touch me to turn me. So this bed is kind of like a, a Ferris wheel, and you have a plate that goes under your feet, and, then, and so when they turn you, you know, you don't slide off of it. And at one point, they forgot to put the plate under my feet, up close to my feet. So when I slid, all, all the skin just kind of, you know, it was already just, I, I mean, I laugh now. I, at the time, I don't remember. I don't remember the pain until um, after the healing started, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it's a protection that the brain does physically, but it's Yahweh's purpose. That's how he protects us because he loves us. But um, so they put me, they were turning me and someone forgot to put the plate up close to my feet. So then when I slid that skin that was just sitting blistery, it, it shifted. And I mean, I kind of remember my mother telling me I yelled out, you know, and that's what had happened, you know, so. But the, but the pain after, and when I say after the healing, I'm talking about once I started to heal physically, was they would use something called betadine soaks because I was raw from the waist up. I, they took the mirrors out the room. I couldn't get out the bed. Um, Dr. Kinley came twice. The first time he came, Dr. Robert um, Bob Buffington gave me the report. Um, and he said on the, on the way to the hospital, they had to pull over because Dr. Kinley got physically sick and he had to stop and he had to vomit. And Dr. Buffington asked him, he said, uh, well, is she gonna be okay? And Dr. Kinley said, well, you never know in cases like this. And um, I laugh now because knowing the Holy Spirit knows each of us. Um, and I'm the type of person I will give people the benefit of the doubt until it's clear that their intent is not good. So um, I'm just saying this just as a reference point. So when, when Dr. Uh, Kinley said, well, you never know in cases like this, I know the Holy Spirit knowing, you know, okay, the way that I would look at things, I might entertain an untruth. So you never know in cases like this, and we each have our own case we each have things that we need help with <clears throat> so at that visit um dr bob buffington said what happened dr kenny walked into the room i'm in reverse isolation they have to put gowns mask gloves on because i have no skin and this process happened internally too so when i would urinate or defecate it was just like being on fire because it was raw internally everything was raw just like externally from the waist up so they would put these betadine soaks on my skin and particularly when they did it on my back, I do remember the pain from that. It was just like somebody would take a match. I'm, I'm imagining what it'd be like so nobody's taking a match and light you on fire. But if you got a really bad burn, you know, where it just keeps burning, um, it was like that, but they had to do it to keep the skin clean. And I remember my mother saying I couldn't talk because everything was swollen inside but when they would do that procedure, she could hear me yelling down the hall. And she, I mean, she would just walk out of the ward because she couldn't stand to hear that. But, you know, that was the physical part of it. The spiritual part of it, when I had this out-of-body experience, <clears throat> I was aware that there was a separation between my mind and my body. And it was kind of like when you have a dream and you're falling asleep. And I can't use the real true words to tell you what it was like. So this is the best I can do. And so, um, <clears throat> but, but it wasn't losing consciousness. Like when you fall asleep, you know, you realize you're losing consciousness, you know, went to go to sleep. But it was instantaneously, I just, I just remember the feeling of <clears throat> knowing my body was on this hospital bed, but my mind was elevated. <clears throat> And then an instant it was, it was separated from the body. And then the next memory that I had was of this being in this um, condition or environment where 
there was depth, like on a, a, a summer night when the sky's real dark, but you can see the clouds. I mean, you can see the stars and they're real clear and it looks like you just reach out and touch them like they're so close, but you know you can't, they're so far away. So it was that kind of <clears throat> ethereal depth. There was substance, I felt, um, um, not substance like we know physically, but um, being um, <laughs> oh, I don't know that I'm gonna have the words anyway. Um, being supported, I guess I could say there was clarity, but not from seeing anything, but it was just from having um, nothing. I guess not having any questioning, everything was clear. And then there was this illumination and in Revelations, if you can find it where it talks about, you know, the um, um, not, not needing the light, I think, um, I'm sorry, I can't, I should have looked it up. But this illumination without any physical light. And then I did have this, I say it was a circular motion, but it was like being suspended. And like when you see the, um, the planets, you know, when you're looking at something, you should have the planets are, you know, kind of suspended out there and moving around. But there was, you know, there wasn't, it was like a circular motion, but if you are turning upside down, you know, you would kind of have lost the balance. Well, there wasn't any gravity there for a loss of balance. And this wonderful feeling of euphoria that I had, it was I mean, that's why I just said your greatest joy never ending. I, that's the only thing I can tell you. It was absolute love. There was nothing that you wanted. You felt comforted, total joy, peace, happiness. Um, and, and that's what I didn't want to end. I didn't want that feeling. Well, I shouldn't say feeling, that state to end. And it was existence without the flesh. Excuse me, what scripture did you want? Oh, let's see here. So you're in Revelations. Um, 21, 22. Thank you, Frank. No, oh, thank you. Revelations 21, 22. Let's see. And I saw no temple therein, for Yahweh Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of Elohim did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Thank you. Yes. And then in John, where it talks about um, Yahshua being the light of men, let's read that too, because that, that's what, um, I mean, looking at these witnesses, it was experiencing being within Yahshua the Messiah, the risen Yahshua the Messiah, Yahweh Elohim, Holy Spirit. Um, it was a witness to that, I'll say. Okay, go ahead with John. John 8 and 12. Then spake Yahshua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Okay, and then let's back up a little bit. Uh, John 1 and 1 through 4. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Thank you. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay. That was a man you. sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The I'm gonna same, stop you. I'm gonna okay. stop you there. Go ahead. I know you want to go ahead and drop down. Is it 14? 14. 14. Okay. Okay. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, 
full of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. So the word was made flesh. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I have to try to stay focused because I, I get revelations every time I talk about it. So, you know, I have this, this new flesh. I, the, the, the flesh, you know, when my old flesh was gone, um, my skin was raw. Uh, there's three layers of skin. You have your epidermis, dermis, and then your subcutaneous layer. And so, um, you know, there's these principles of threes and um, <laughs> the pattern, they just keep repeating. So, you know, this new flesh from the waist up is 23 years chronologically younger than my chronological age. So <laughs> when people say, oh, well, you look so much younger. <laughs> Sometimes if I mess with them, I'll say, well, I actually I'm 23 years younger than, or 23 years older than what you think I am. But um, let me get back. So the second visit that Dr. Kinley, um, well, let me finish the first visit. So when he came out, Dr. Bob Buffington said he walked into the room, they had to put on gowns, masks, uh, gloves, covered his shoes. And I knew he was there, I knew he was coming but I couldn't stay awake. I tried my dog on us to stay awake for the visit and I couldn't, I don't remember the visit at all. And um, Bob Buffington said that he came in the room and he, when you walked in the door, you would walk in facing the side of the bed. So he entered, faced the bed, walked around to the opposite side. So he was facing the door. And then Dr. Buffington was facing, he stayed on the opposite side of the bed. So he, they were facing each other. <clears throat> and there were no words spoken. Dr. Bob Buffington said he just looked intently on, on, the, on my body. And what Bob Buffington, Dr. Bob Buffington heard was live, Marcy, live. He said, but there were no words spoken. So, I mean, that's all I can tell you is what the witness told me. So over time, I was in the hospital, like I said, 40 days. Um, so you have that principle of 40 there, and there's a lot, a lot of other uh, manifestations in it, but I won't take time to go over those. Um, so the second visit, Dr. Um, Oliver, Oliver Gill and Dr. Kinley came out together. And when Dr. Kinley came in the room, you know, usually people will say, well, hi, how are you doing? And the first thing he said to me was, are you in any pain? And it just caught me off guard. I thought, <laughs> it's kind of like what shall we say then you know somebody approaches you with that I thought well okay well that's nice he's concerned but you know he's like well hi how are you doing are you in any pain but no he said are you in any pain and so it kind of caught me off guard and I said no no I'm not and he said okay and we kind of had you know a converse, small conversation and then he said at one point he said well I'm getting ready to go back to California he said, but I want you to know if you need anything. He said, you know where I am and you know where Dr. Gill is. And that just, it didn't seem right either. You know, okay, that, you know, I would ask my family if I need it. I'm still thinking physically, if I needed something, I'll have to go to my family first. But then years later, what the revelation of that was, you know, out of with two or three witnesses, let all things be established knowing um, let's see, I see these words mess me up. Okay, so I'll say knowing. Um, being blessed with the knowledge of Yahshua the Messiah. Dr. Kinley had that vision and the revelation, divine vision, divine revelation, excellent vision and revelation. And he was fully aware of Yahshua the Messiah. As others were exposed to the, to the gospel, to the preaching, then they become aware and they have a divine and excellent vision, more perfect understanding of um, the gospel. And so what he was saying to me was, um, that that I had experienced, and, and I have to back up because I left the part out, that that I had experienced um, was the essence of it was the experience that he had, and he, he was saying the experience that Dr. Gill had. 
And anyone that has that experience where you have a divine vision and revelation and excellent understanding, then, then you also become a witness and you have a testimony to give. Um, so the, I had a burning question when I came to class. I wanted to know where did I come from? That, that was my personal question when I came to class. Been to nursing school, I knew you know about reproduction and all that, but that wasn't enough. I thought there's something before that ovum and you know that sperm and all that. But where was that? What was that? And so these principles, Yahweh is the all in all. That's where we come from. That is that substance and source of everything. And so the experience that I had, he showed it to me that way, you know, that you are one with that, that you are within. And so I had come from, and I, I think I said it in the, the way I wrote it out, I'd come from everlasting spirit. Yahweh is eternal, his spirit is eternal. And I'd witnessed true salvation, that um, total peace, joy, comfort, the never ending, so eternal life. And that's only in the son who is Yahweh Elohim. And the name of the son is Yahshua the Messiah, whether in or out of a physical body. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna in here, if anybody has any questions, um, I'll put my email and a phone number in the chat because I know I, I never do it full justice. But the healing, what yes, physically I was healed. The most more important part is the, it, it was for spiritual healing. That, that was the purpose of it. Um, So I guess what I want to say is each of us, we have to examine ourselves. And it can be in various manifestations. It might be physical, mental, spiritual. Um, and then when I, when I talk about examining yourself, <clears throat> I like to talk about what your intention is. Because intention comes from the heart. And you might manifest something that is not truly your intention. And so you, you, want, you want to be, um, I was thinking atonement. <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna show unity. You wanna show the oneness. You don't want to manifest one thing, but your intent is something else. Because Yahweh knows our hearts. Like Yahweh um, is a discerner, discerner of our hearts. And we want, we want to um, manifest unity. So let me end with, um, in Jude, it's the doxology, but I love it because it, in, in the short version there that it is, it encompasses everything, it says everything. So if you could read Jude 1, 24 and 25, and I'll end there. Would you like King James or Holy Name? Um, I never thought about the difference. So I guess it is. whatever you have. I got King James Version, June okay. 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Okay. So I do see the difference now. So thank you for pointing that out because it is important. The difference is um, in the last part of, well, in the verse 25, the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, is the difference. That part's not in there. And that's mm -hmm. important to have that part in there. So let me just back up. So unto him who is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. So nothing that we can do, it has to all be done by Yahweh through Yahweh Elohim, who is Yahshua, the Messiah, Holy Spirit without shape and form. And we learn of Yahshua because of Yahshua the Messiah in shape and form and the things that he did while he was in the flesh. So it's unto him, and this is the unity. So it's unto that unity that is able to keep you from falling and to keep you fall, and I'm sorry, to present you faultless mm -hmm. before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And that exceeding joy, I, I will never forget that feeling mm -hmm. of euphoria. Um, and you have experiences where you have had similar total joy or euphoria, you know, so, so look on those things just to kind of get back and grab the essence of, of that because we can't understand it fully in the flesh. To the only wise Elohim, our savior, Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh, <laughs> Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh Elohim is our savior. And it's through Yahshua the Messiah, the name of the Holy Spirit. And look up the word sovereign. Through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, to the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. And while you're looking up the word um, um, sovereign, sovereign, something else came to mind real quick reading this. Um, I think, what's today, Friday? Yesterday in class, Dr. Jeffrey Sims was speaking and he was talking about ages to come and how they would have an end. There's no time in the ages, the sixth and seventh age, but um, they would have an end. And when I thought about that, I thought, you know, we don't, what do we know? How do we know? We, when we talk about an end, we say, it's related to time. Um, but then when I looked up the definition of end, it said conclusion. And then that just made it understandable to me. Ages to come, they're, they're, they will have a conclusion because Yahweh Elohim is the beginning and he is the end. We, read, we can read that in the scriptures, um, but we can't think about it in our fleshly terms of time okay so sovereign a supreme ruler especially a monarch well a supreme ruler that that's enough there so to the only wise elohim our savior through yahshua the messiah our supreme ruler belongs glory and majesty dominion and power both before all time and now and ever so i would just like to admonish you to um Hang on to the truths that Yahweh has shown you. Don't think that they're too little um, to, um, to not to say they don't mean anything because it's all Yahweh and, and um, his glory. Understanding his glory is um, what will bring you exceeding joy. So thank you for the opportunity to give a small testimony. I'll give you my um, email and phone number if you have any questions i know i know i didn't give it justice but i hope that you got something from it all praises to yashua the messiah hallelujah Wow. You know, I just do have one question. Um, and maybe you've said this, maybe I just didn't get it. When you had this experience, did it um, give you, like, just improve your faith? And, and did it just make you aware of something that you totally were, were unaware of? Did it just make your faith, like, a thousandfold? Mm-hmm. Thank you for asking, because that's what I left out. <laughs> I love how the Holy Spirit works. Um, I was, what, what it did when I physically started to, you know, there were two weeks that I don't remember from the actual experience. 
once I was conscious again, I was aware that I was different, that I had been changed. I knew my name. I knew I'd been sick. I'd been in the hospital, blah, blah, blah. But I was not the same person. And what it, I, I can only use words, but what it was like is um, before when I would be in nature, you know, I'm just appreciating the trees and the wind and the animals and all that. Afterwards, I felt the connection hmm. to trees, to animals and, and the energy. I mean, I'm Yahweh's still working with me on that. Um, Ayurveda is a, I, I want to say a, a philosophy. Anyway, it means the word Ayurveda means the science of life. And so I've always been drawn to um, things that connect the body, you know, like what you eat and how your body works and all this stuff. But in Ayurveda, there's an element called um, the ether element. And it's the fifth element. And it, it, in a nutshell, it is the space that fills things. So, you know, when we go somewhere, we don't think anything about driving or walking or, you know, we're getting there. Yeah, there is a distance that we have to travel to do it. But what we're traveling through is a type and a shadow of Yahweh being the all in all. And this ether element it's it's the space outside our bodies it's a space within our bodies mm -hmm. um, so what I was aware of was this space between I'll say my physical body and other things that there was this connection we shared this connection hmm. And so I would just remember being changed. And when I would feel the sun or feel the wind or see an animal, um, it just felt like we were all one. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know it doesn't make sense, but um, yeah. So I was just aware that uh, mm -hmm. there was this oneness that I was not aware of before. Mm -hmm. Okay. I remember Richard Davis' testimony is similar to that, what he said he saw. He said it was so magnificent. He said words, just he can't even express it, but he just know that there's something far greater than this. Mm -hmm. So you're like a witness to, to him, for me. Praise Joshua. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not, we're not separated. No, in the flesh, in the flesh that's the manifestation, that's the illusion we have. But in reality, we are not separated from our creator. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And you said there was another part um, you wanted from the um, this this pamphlet. Do you remember what oh, it was? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Let me, let me pull it out. Yeah. See, I get them. Sorry See, I was listening. <laughs> Thank you. Takes a village. You're a wonderful <laughs> listener. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Different gifts. Okay. Um, yes. Page seven. And um, yes, page seven. And then it's the paragraph that starts um, up, up a little further. First among the requirements. <laughs> I just love this because where you're going to end is actually what Lenore was asking me. So hallelujah. Um, start where it says first among the requirements and then read down to uh, where it says it becomes a spiritual oneness with the father. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First among the requirements of securing spiritual blessings from these pages is peace of mind. Mm -hmm. As when the master desired to pray he chose a place of solitude apart from the pressure of daily living, usually in the vast stillness of a mountainside. Mm. There in the majestic grandeur of the, of the nature of which he had helped his father to create in the realm of the invisible, the materialized son of Yahweh Elohim stripped himself of all earthly restrictions. 
and stood spiritually naked before the throne. Mm. Thus, out of the self of daily necessity, his mind became the instrument through which flowed the will of his father. Thus, it is with the mind of man today, along with his communion, it is the will of the father to reveal to his children the mysteries of his universe. Be still and know that I am Yahweh. Mm. Once man has withdrawn from his physical surroundings, the next thing is the clearing of the mind. For it is in a still, small voice that Elohim speaks. Having done this, the, medi the meditation as assumes a deeper significance than mere study. It becomes a spiritual oneness with the Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. Is, is that enough? That's it. It that's becomes true. a spiritual oneness with the Father, and that's that's what it is, and that's what we um, give praise for, is understanding that spiritual oneness with the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Almost sharing that. Thank you. That was, that, was, that was a confirmation of what my sister and I talked about last night. Mm. Yes. So just to hear it this morning, mm. hear her express it, is the same experience as it is to be a midwife watching life come forth. That's coming from invisibility to visibility. That's mm. the blessing we have. Thank you, Dr. Kilby. Thank you. Thank you. All praises to Yahshua. I, I love to hear other testimonies. I, I know one time I listened and people were giving testimonies and, you know, I was just saying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's me correct. Thank you, Yahshua. Yes. So Yahshua can witness to his son. All praises All to Yahshua. Wow. Wow. Um, Oh, somebody raised their hand. Um, Dr. I think it's Dr. Uh, Lewis. Yes, good morning, everyone. I thoroughly enjoyed what well, was edified really and appreciate your testimony, uh, Dr. Kilby. Um, and since you gave your testimony, I and you and you also mentioned the out-of-body experience. I know there are others who, I know Richard Davis had one too, as we are aware of, but I know someone else is on this call who have given testimony that they have also had that out-of-body experience. And since we are talking about that today, I was, hoping, and I, I would have to ask Dr. Lenore Allen, if Dr. Um, Valerie Lewis is still on the call, if she wouldn't mind giving her testimony of her out-of-body experience, which I think will edify the class also, if she is willing. Sounds good to me. Good uh, afternoon. Good morning. Um, yeah, I had ex some experiences with the, which I didn't know it was called astral projection until I explained it to what was going on with to somebody that was in class. And this was when I was very new in class and I had a number of experiences. And uh, the first time it happened to me, I was... Uh, well, let me see. There is a, <laughs> there's so many, but um, the one of the first times it happened to me was uh, I had a, I was laying in bed and uh, not asleep. I was just laying there and I uh, actually, I heard somebody coming in the back door of my apartment and I was just, you know, single and living alone and 
you had to go, there was two doors that were locked. You had to come in the outside door, go up a couple stairs, then there was an inside door. And I heard both of those doors open up and then some footsteps going through the kitchen and then there was beads and stuff that was separated the kitchen from the living room. And I heard them go through these beads and I heard more steps and my bedroom was way up in front. And when I came, when it, the person came in, I was petrified. I was like, you know, I couldn't move. And uh, this is a, then there was this little man came in and I didn't, I, this is why I was brand new in class and I never saw a picture of Dr. Kinley, but he came in and he, uh, the, he appeared in the bedroom and I, and I was, like I said, I was frightened. And uh, he looked at me and he just nodded his head. And then peace just flushed through my body. Mm. And then he turned around, walked back out, went through the beads, you heard him clanging, went through the, you know, the apartment and then down and out the back door again. So he came in the back door and he went out the back door. And that was my first experience. And at that time, I've never seen a picture of Dr. Kinley and I didn't know who it was. And uh, just to jump ahead at the 75 convention in Washington, DC, I remember uh, going outside uh, the crowd before we went outside and sat outside the room just before the crowd came out and they led Dr. Kinley out, um, you know, prior to right after the doxology and prior to everybody else. And he looked at me the same way and nodded his head. And I was like, wow, you know, so it's like, that was one experience. And then after that, I've had uh, experiences where I've astral projected and I was, you know, stuck in a wall and I was looking at the electric <laughs> and it's like, I was in a, a person's a room where some people in, that I knew were talking about something and I asked them about it the next day. And I actually, I always wanted to go to Africa when I was a kid because my dad used to tell me stories and I was astral projection. I was in Syracuse, New York. I was, le yeah, I left the body. So it's like the, my physical body was laying in the bed and I could look back at it. My astral, my inner man left. And um, then I remember traveling through and I was going to Africa. And I remember traveling through New York and going over the city of New York and seeing all the lights. And then I was going through the ocean and it got really cold and dark and I got nervous and scared and I wanted to go back. And so I tried to go back and I went back and saw the, you know, went back to the area where I was in Syracuse. And I was, this is the first time I, and I tried to, my body tried to slip back into my body as I, cause I was so scared. I wanted to get back, get back. You know, I didn't know what was going on. And um, the bottom part of me actually went, <laughs> slipped into my, body and then I kept the top part I kept trying to push down into the top part of me and it would kept bouncing up so I was only halfway in and I got really scared <laughs> and anyways so I was like and then finally it slipped in and I was you know at peace again and there was other experiences I had I'm not sure exactly what uh Dr. Lewis Sybil Lewis wanted to know but um it was just an experience. And I remember thinking, I'm never going to tell anybody about this because I thought it was just to too strange. And the next day, a girl in class comes over and uh, she goes, uh, oh, I told her, I just blurted it out, you know, and uh, she says, oh, you just asked for projected. Some people in class do that. And it's like a common, and I go, what? And then I was telling her about uh, that visit that I had from that man. And then she showed me a picture of Dr. Kinley and I go, that's him. And it was wow. like, I was just like, I was, and then other times it's happened again. And the reason I don't uh, uh, talk about it that much, I mean, on some agendas, you can talk about it, but these are personal witnesses that there is an inner man and that you have something besides this physical body, you know, and, uh, People need to know that there's an inner man and that's what, that's who you truly are. You know, I mean, I was out of my, out of my body looking back at that body and it was just laying there in the, on the bed. So it's like there, it's a powerful witness to me that 
there's more to the you than, you know, people look at you as just your physical body. That's not who you really are. Your spirit, soul, and body. And your soul is what's being converted or changed to be able to be saved and glorify Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua throughout eternity. And that's what it's all about, is the power of the, the Holy Spirit upon, in you, you know, and converting that soul. And so that they're, they're soul, that's the, what's going to go on throughout eternity. So it's a, it was a really powerful witness to me after I got over the fright. And I've had other experiences since then. But, you know, it's like, it's all witnessing that that soul is really who you are. And that's what's going to go on throughout eternity. So you look at the physical and think that's it. But no, you're much more than that. So I don't know if that uh, was what Sybil was referring to. And hopefully somebody, you know, can appreciate it. And I know there's other people in class that have had that experience also, but, you know, the thing is, it's like, it's beautiful to see how Yahweh works with your soul. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important part. So all praise go to Yahshua. That's right. Thanks for sharing. Thank you both. Hallelujah. Very Anyone else? Well, we I have my hand up. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Okay. And I'm not going to be long. My testimony is very short. But uh, Dr. Lewis's uh, testimony um, made me feel that it's okay to tell mine because now I actually understand it. Uh, where all of these years I had not understood it, but I was able to, from over my bed when I delivered uh, my daughter, I was actually able to watch myself delivering her to look down at myself, delivering her. But um, this is the first time that I've been able to associate that with, uh, with my soul, seeing something. And I appreciate that. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Thank you, um, Lewis. Hey, I, I just wanted to add one more thing. Uh, I mean, I was kind of uh, caught off guard and I hadn't thought about a lot of these things, but there was one event that happened when I was living in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Like I said, I've, I've had these experiences a number of times. And this one that was really um, beautiful to me was... Uh, uh, and one day, one night I was laying in bed and I saw an apparition or something walk into the bedroom and went down across the bottom of the bed and it went in front of a plant that I had in the window and it was different than some of the other bodies that I saw or apparitions that I saw and it was like I saw the plant right through the person, you know, or the body, you know, anyways, came up on this along the side of my bed and what it did is it pressed it, it pushed itself on my chest so that it was, it was hard to breathe. And my first reaction was to uh, grab uh, my husband and uh, ask him to help. And uh, he wasn't there. And uh, then I tried to grab the hand myself. So it's like you go outside yourself to somebody that you care about will help you. And then they weren't there. And I gr tried to grab the hand that was pressing on my chest myself. And then all of a sudden it hit me. It was like, oh, Yahshua, please. So I cried out in the name of Yahshua and that was gone. It was like I was resurrected through Yahshua. So you can't really depend on others. You can't even depend on your own self. You got to cry out to Yahshua and he That's will right. get you through. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It was 
it was a beautiful lesson. Yes, I've had that experience myself. Thank you. Bernie's hand is up as, as well, Dr. Allen. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm not seeing these hands. Okay, yeah. uh, thank you, Dr. Villanueva. Bernie? He was up. I don't know whether he's... I think he's around because... Yeah, I, uh, he was. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's unmuted. Bernie? Maybe it's the sound factor. Yeah, because... Because he's unmuted. I yeah. think he said yesterday that he probably couldn't talk. He's on a job. I don't... Maybe that's what's oh, happening. I, no, he got injured. He's home. Oh, he's... Okay. So I don't, I don't know, well, he can always come back. Anybody else had these experiences? And the, the one key thing with me was that all, none of this happened. It all happened after I came into the, this teaching. And it's like, at first, I never even heard of astral projection or any of these kind of things or had any experience until after I came into class. And it's like to depend on Yahshua to get you through some of these events that are, scary you know to say something after you get through it's like oh praise joshua mm -hmm. well dr lewis and everybody that's listening i have to say that my experience happened before i came into the class but that just helps me still to understand that my Creator has been watching over me all this time. That my soul has never been abandoned. Uh, he's been with me through many, right. many things. But yeah, like we're Isaiah's just talking about uh, the actual projection uh, right now. So that's why I brought that. Uh, up about me watching myself give birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it talks about how he's girded thee, though mm -hmm. thou has not known mm -hmm. me. Hallelujah. So it's That's like he's right. taking care of us along the way. And then you, when you come into the teaching, it's like, whoa, you understand your spirit, soul, and body. You understand more things. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Bernie, are you there? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can oh, hear you now. Can hear you now, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was just going to share a brief testimony. Uh, just uh, coming into uh, what what kind of what really it um, where I why I knew I was in the right place was because uh, when I was a teenager, I um. I don't know what happened, but I just basically went to bed. I don't, and I won't get into any other details on that part, but I went to bed and um, I had this, uh, it, it would seem like a dream, but it was so clear that I was going across the universe hmm. at a tremendous speed. And yet there was no sensation of movement. <laughs> and you know, like, it just was like, I knew I was going outside the universe. After a while, it was made just to know that. And then it stopped, but it was utter darkness. I mean, darkness that could be felt. And I was trying to open my eyes and there was no difference, you know, and it scared me. And what happened was, um, you know, it kind of made me feel really vulnerable, you know, and I, I remember, uh, I think I started to cry. And then I held, felt this vibration and a vibration that started coming, like getting uh, more and it, it was small. And then it went from small and kept growing, but it grew to the point of like Dr. Kinley said, insensibility. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but what was happening was it was also getting lighter. There was light coming, 
if you could put it that way, as that vibration grew. And it was as though I was standing in front of a, an immense power station. That's the only way I can think to kind of uh, describe like this immense power that I was just almost like a speck in front of that was just so pure. And when I say pure, it's not like just clean. It's, it's full of love and joy and those type of things. When I say it, that's what I mean by pure. There's no ill will of anything. And mm -hmm. it's just, but it's so powerful that what I did was I remember um, I put my head down and said, I'm not worthy. And it made me, I remember what, wait, maybe it was, uh, but I do remember I started getting what, what was a big thing was, that's right. Before that happened, I was sitting there when this power came up like that, because once it came up, it started, it stopped vibrating and I was able to feel and it was pure and I, and what happened was my life started getting red and what I did to other individuals. And I saw images, it was as though I, it was as though I was red in a split second, but yet I could see all these images like in slow motion. I don't know how to explain it, but that's basically what happened. And when I saw these images of people in my life and situations I was there with them I basically um if I inflicted some kind of pain by something I said yes I actually felt that pain Whoa. so the pain that I inflicted on them was in me if I could put it that way and so that's when I just said I put my head down and said I'm not worthy that's when I did that and I started to cry. And as I was crying, I mean, I, I, when I say I started to cry, I was bawling like, I started bawling like a baby. And the, um, all I could feel is that I didn't, it just kind of like happened. It was like, um, it was almost as though, like he was pouring love into me. Like I didn't even realize it, but it was like, love was being poured in me and coming out of it was like flowing and it was the best feeling I've ever had in my life to the point that it was like like I just like that feeling of oneness was there like you real like I realized it was not just it was just not like that it was everything that I don't know how to say it, but everything was one and so after that point, um, I did think of something back on in my life and it was time to go. And I said, I don't want to go home. I mean, I don't want to go, I'm home, but I had to, I felt myself going back to the earth, like back to that part. And, um, but I do have to say that was, I, I look at that and what I got out of that when I, when I did come to class and I heard the first time I came to class, some, somebody read the panoramic vision pamphlet my first day. And um, the way part of what Dr. Kinley uh, or what Dr. Kinley explained is panoramic vision. I said, oh, I felt part of that. I, I know I'm in the right place. <laughs> so, um, and as time's gone on, I realized that the things that, you know, Dr. Kinley has said, you know, this, uh, this teaching is to get us to know our creator and to um, resurrect our soul and bring us the divine attributes and to do no harm. And, um, you know, I, I know that I've done wrong in the past, but the, but the beauty of it is, is you can always repent to Yahshua. You can always repent to those individuals and Yahshua does forgive and he does forget this is the moment to, this is the time to do it and to ask Yahshua to make you 
straight, you know, to make you that acceptable, present you faultless. So I do, um, he knows your heart and he knows that he, you can, what's crooked can be made straight. And um, I, I understand now when Dr. Kinley says, nobody's getting away with anything. You know, I could really understand that. And um, you don't wanna be, you know, I'm eternally grateful for being in the teaching. And, I'm, and it saved my life more than, more than a lot of times. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. Praise Yashua. Dr. Allen, uh, Dr. Uh, Amir Coleman's hand is up as well. Dr. Coleman. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I never really shared this with anybody outside of, um, outside of, uh, Really, uh, I think I'm only going to two people. <laughs> Sound but, muffled, Dr. Coleman. Sound oh. muffled. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. But like what, um, um, like what Valerie was talking about, Yahweh gives us experiences and those experiences that Yahweh gives us are confirmations for us it's not always to go out and to um, tell especially if he's not sending you to show you something uh, to share his doctrine um, things that are that he has shown us it assures and it reassures with us that there is a living Elohim and that he is effectual in our lives. And I like how Richard Davis put it. He said, when you're having a bad day, he's right there having it with you. But um, <clears throat> to explain my um, experience in being in this teaching, we know that there are different levels um, of, of understanding that we go through um, being exposed to this teaching and growing up, um, learning about the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. You do reach certain levels. Um, and I was at the point, and I, I used level for a, a lack of better words, uh, expression, stage, level anyway i was at the point being a youngin in this teaching wanting to tell everybody that i can lay my eyes on about the gospel of yahshua the messiah where you're at that point where you're just you come into this teaching He's opening things up. He's showing you the, he's giving you revelations, gifts on the simplicity. And we're just overwhelmed and marveled and overjoyed, full of happiness. You just want to share because that's what the gospel is. is. You want to share the good news. And I wanted to tell everybody. And I told my friends, I even went as far to, talk to my teachers <laughs> in the schools. I was telling anybody I could uh, hold a conversation with. Um, but I didn't have the understanding that Yashua has allowed me to have now. Um, I didn't know that John 14, 26, that the Holy Spirit is the teacher. I'm still getting carnal uh, uh, um, carnal minded thoughts and impressions, that's still being cut out of me. So I'm at the stage where I'm looking at the vessel, I'm looking at the person that's speaking, I'm thinking it's the person that's speaking, etc. All right. <clears throat> so when I would talk to people, and they will, you know, change the subject, or 
um, um, or uh, outright deny, you know, or especially talking with a younger generation because I'm obviously, um, I was, I think, a teenager at that time. Talking to younger folks, it, it, um, they would just outright, uh, you know, mock you or make fun of you. So I had that a lot, you know, being mocked, being uh, ignored, uh, you know, uh, uh, conversation change or somebody so happened to call or pop up, you know, devil has many tactics to try to um, influence the soul from, from not hearing the words that come, that uh, come through. Yeah, uh, uh, Yashua. Um, anyway, because I know class is about to end. So when I was telling people, they weren't here and they would ignore me. And I kept feeling bad about it. And I kept beating myself up. And I thought that there was something wrong with me because as good as it as I have received it and as beneficial it had from my soul, I was getting frustrated as uh, I was getting frustrated with the fact that it wasn't benefiting other souls and that they didn't want to hear to it. So it got to a point that I said within myself, well, what is the point of going to class and going to IDMR if it ain't going to benefit nobody else? How is it, you know, I'm looking at it, how is it going to benefit me? And one day or one night, me being a skeptic, I'm on the internet searching end times and signs of the end and looking for confirmations of witness on, witnesses on things. I felt tired and that's the best way I can explain it. I felt tired and I laid down on the couch and like the first speaker expressed it, there was no transition from consciousness to unconsciousness, you know, when you're closing your eyes and going to sleep. One moment I was laying on the couch and the next moment it was completely, I was in a different um, uh, uh, state. It was darkness. And then after the darkness, there was this light. And the best way to describe it was the way that Richard Davis explained it. He said he saw the huge, massive substance lit up everywhere, and it was huge. It was colossal. And it was spirit, spirit substance. And the spirit substance was light. So I'm in this realm, and I'm in this spirit substance. And I noticed that I don't have a physical body on me. The best way to describe it, I had a translucent, transparent body, yet I can see the spirit moving in, in uh, um, um, moving and in, in shaping and forming within me. It's kind of like the best way to put it, like smoke in a, a, a mason jar. You know, you see the smoke moving within the, the form of the, of the jar. So though I didn't have a physical body, I was a translucent or transparent, best way to invisible, um, um, just my inner man, my soul, invisible entity. I was talking to another individual who had another body just like mine, but I knew that this person was their own individual, though it looked exactly like me, um, but that's the best way I can put it. And this individual I remember talking to and they moved away from me. And I felt a very, um, a, a, a very, um, I wouldn't even say sadness. It was a, a deep feeling I was, I was expressing. And I remember I covered my eyes, like you know, I showed an uh, Adamic transgression, Adam's uh, hands covering his face. I covered, I remember covering my, my eyes or my face, but I was looking dead at my feet looking through my hands and my feet. So this place I was in, there's nothing hidden. Everything is all exposed, is all revealed. But yet there was some things I couldn't make out. It was these tall structures of, of, of pure spirit or of, of light. 
and I couldn't make out the structures, but it didn't hurt my eyes, like looking at the sun, you know, looking at something real bright. It's just, I couldn't make out uh, uh, what it was because of the brilliance of it. But anyway, as I'm um, looking at my feet with my hands covered, I experienced what the first speaker experienced and what Bernie experienced, the, um, the vibration and the pulling. And I actually like it. Uh, I like the way it's Doc put, puts it in the uh, pamphlet. Um, if you was to go to the fourth page of the panoramic vision pamphlet, and if you was to read, um, if you was to read the third paragraph, he says, we and our surroundings had been radiant with light. Mm -hmm but we now begin to dim there was no need to see we could sense with greater clarity as the source of power came near now the same thing that doc described was the same thing i experienced i felt the source come from behind me and it first started as a small vibration you know like i'm using sound to describe the sensation and feeling it was a small and then it slowly so that's that's how it was growing from behind me to around me to it became from all over but i'll continue and in, um in the section he says greater and greater it became until we were vibrating with such frequency as to approach insensibility. After all, we were not Yahweh Eloah. It was a provision of his superior wisdom that no man was permitted to see his face. And, and he goes on to explain, but that sensation, um, I felt it grow and it was vibrating to the point where I couldn't sense or feel or anything else. All I, I can know and sense or all that I can comprehend is that this power that I didn't identify with, uh, with a, a, a individual, but that this power is coming upon me and it's growing. And I'm afraid because this is something I've never felt before. So I feel it as though the, the, the vibration or the power that was moving towards me, I felt a sensation that it stopped. And I turned aside or I turned around to see. And when I turned around to see, I saw this tall figure. I was about <laughs> half its size. My head, the crown of my head was about to its waist. And I'm looking up and the figure is looking down at me. Now I see as it's described on the chart, the white, light that was radiant or uh, emanating around Yahweh Elohim. And the best way to describe that to you is when NASA takes a picture of the sun. And when you look at the sun, you see how the solar flares, how they emanate out of the sun and then it goes back in and then it comes out. You see these little arches in the sun of the flares. That's how he looked, but it was spirit and it was light. It was the spirit or the light was flowing and it was emanating out of him going within. And his eyes were like flame of fire without color. His pupils were, were inflamed, his, were, were like flames, but of pure white light. And my whole body is vibrating. At this point, I'm petrified. I cannot move. I cannot speak unless I was given permission. I could not, I was thunderstruck. So I'm looking up at him. He's looking up down at me. And I don't know what to think. I don't know what to say. I'm just like a, a deer in headlights. And I heard him utter a voice that originated from within me. Like Doc described, there was no sound waves that impacted my ears. His voice was as calm as I'm speaking to you. But the way I felt it was like, 
boom, boom, boom. But though he was talking like this, the magnitude of his voice sounded like thundering and it sounded like lightning. So it was like he was talking calm and yelling at the same time. I can't, that's the best way I can cognitively and uh, express it. But he thundered within my soul because my whole body reacted to me. Don't you ever say you're not good enough to preach the true gospel. Now he's thundering and hammering these words into my being. I'm reacting, but the beauty in the, in the power behind, uh, behind it was by the time he finished his sentence, I was already made right. What do you mean? As he was explaining this to me, I was feeling a rushing mighty wind come upon me. And it was of encouragement, of empowerment, of inspiration, of confidence. And it was swirling and it felt good. And it felt like I could take on the whole world. So by the time he was done finished talking to me, I was already standing upright. I felt my, I won't say posture, but I felt my being being made upright. And I felt like I could challenge the world. And then after that, it went dark. And then I woke up in my body and I was confused for about two, three or four days. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what happened. I'm sitting there confused. And then he slowly gives me a recapitulation of the experience. So as I'm telling you right now, I'm experiencing it in my head or having a recapitulation. So if, if I'm explaining it in too much detail, that's why, because I'm, I'm seeing it play out. So I say that in conclusion that Yahweh gives us things for our confirmation and our reassurance. Now it was prophesied he will make himself known. It, what, what, um, I'm gonna just paraphrase or quote it, where he says, um, um, "Your old man shall, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh." You know, your old man will dream dreams, and he said, "Your young man shall see visions." Now, Doctor Kinley had the divine vision and revelation, the one that encompassed both Moses and John. And he's seen the whole purpose from beginning to end. But I'm telling you, folks, it, the visions did not stop with Dr. Kendall. Now, I'm making myself clear on what I'm saying. We're not saying that we're receiving a divine vision, but Yahweh does give visions and dreams and in, in, um, um, even having astral projections or healings for yes, us. He does. Yes, for and, and it is not so that we can go out and to necessarily preach it as doctrine, as some believe. No, but it right. is to because we are an epistle, it's an account or a witness on the behalf of the our savior, Yahshua the Messiah, that he that we've had with him, our experience, our interaction. So know that you or we can still have what people may say a vision or experiences from Yahweh. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm thankful that, that he has given us these things, you know, to, to uh, share with one another because it's not to take and to teach, but it's to take and to be inspired that yes, there is a living Elohim. He is real and he does communicate with his creation. So I just wanted to express that a little bit. I hope you got uh, something out of it, but it. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. I was edifying. Can I, can I just say one last thing I wanted to add? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. The, after my experience, uh, when I woke up, it was as though. I was so fresh that as though I lay down and just got right back up, there was no sensation to sleep. You know how you feel tired. And mm -hmm. the utter feeling of peace, peace like I've never, ever had in my life in that way. 
it was like such an experience that it was like I didn't even want to talk to anybody because all I wanted to do was bask in that peace for the entire day. And that's the kind of thing that, uh, I mean, that experience, I'll never forget it. So just want to share that last part of it. Hallelujah. So one of these. Wow, days, time's up. It is indeed. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's we thank good. everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. in Malaysia, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in London, England. Our doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong mm -hmm. glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say together, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah, bless you. Bless your day. Beautiful testimony. I'm glad. Yeah. See what you I'm started, glad. civil. <laughs>